When you play a game, the thing that usually gets most of the screen time is the level. It has an effect on the player that nothing else in the game can replace. It can be used to tell you a story, lead you through the game's core mechanics, and give you a visual representation of what you're stepping into. And that is for the player. But there are multiple ways of designing a level for the game developer though, and it's not easy to pick one. It depends on the game engine you're using, what tools you're utilizing for your project, and your creativity. However, there are also other factors in play which we're going to talk about today. And for those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Sam or Saiku, and I'm starting this new game design series on the channel as I promised earlier called Game Quest. And I'm actually able to make this series come true thanks to all of our Patreons who are supporting the content. So I just want to give a huge shout out to makeagame.com, Flu Joey, Richard Stance, and Kupla for all their support. So now, with that being said, let us get started with the first episode in which we'll talk about level design and the different methods of creating a level. The first option of generating levels is by using scene generation assets. Now if you're used to a game engine like Unity, you may already be familiar with some assets like Gaia and MapMagic World Generator. I will also link a few potential assets you could use in the description below. If you've heard of these before, these are used for generating large scale levels such as landscapes. There are some common features most of these assets share, such as generating specific biomes, designing features like villages and forests, and so on. For larger landscapes, you might want to use some of these features as they will greatly improve your efficiency with time. So for instance, games like Crowfall have used some assets from the Unity Asset Store. Just to give you all full context, Crowfall is an upcoming MMORPG game being made with Unity. And the main point of an MMORPG is that it's massive. It stands for Massive Multiplayer Online RPG, and Crowfall seems to generate the levels and use multiple different ones directly in their scenes. This allows them to save a lot of time from designing levels only by hand, which they can use to develop their game. And to elaborate more on this, I want to take Grand Theft Auto 5 or GTA 5 as an example too. I think almost everyone knows about this game at this point, but it's basically an open world game made by Rockstar Games. Now before recording the video, I was looking for a lot of information on how GTA 5's level was made, but I couldn't find anything related to generation. I just saw a bunch of posts from Rockstar employees and from other sources such as news outlets that say they were a lot of people who worked on it. I mean, you may take Rockstar as an inspiration for not using a generation software for their game, but you need to keep in mind we're talking about a thousand people who worked on GTA 5, and it also took them several years to make this game come true, so just keep that in mind. But besides that, I found some interesting stuff about their level design process, including this on Quora. So they were saying, quote, First, Rockstar built a white box city model, basically a 3D working model with no textures, that took between 9 to 12 months to build up, but it was the constant iterations and tweaks of the model based on playability by up to a thousand developers, including pre-production, modeling, coding, art direction, creating textures, test plays, etc. That took the bulk of the time. Rockstar also mentioned that Google Maps helped them a lot on designing the city, as it was used to create a replica of Southern California and Los Angeles. I wanted to bring up GTA 5 as an example since the game features an absolutely massive map which also happens to be inspired from a real location. But what is my main point here? What I'm trying to say is Rockstar had enough manpower and headcount to send their own research teams literally around California to just bring in real life construction intel into their own project. But since we don't have a thousand people in our development team, that makes it more difficult. But luckily, the only options of making a game level is not just by either handcrafting it and making it by yourself or using a scene generation asset, but we can also procedurally generate levels. Procedural generation as a whole is a method of creating data algorithmically as opposed to manually. 
In level design, this is used for creating levels the same way, so instead of creating them manually and placing every tree by yourself, you have the computer generate some maps for you after you feed in some data. For instance, the game you're seeing on the screen right now is called Dead Cells. It's a metroidvania platformer, which means that every time you die in the game, you spawn back at start. Since that restart might be annoying for some people when they die in game, the developers made it procedurally generate its levels, so you never really repeat anything despite respawning back at start. So once you die, you find yourself in the same room you started in, but once you exit that room, there's a whole new world waiting for you. And because of that, while playing the game, I felt that it was much more fun in its own style. I've also played metroidvania platformers before that don't have procedurally generated maps, such as Hollow Knight. I felt like Hollow Knight had its own fun as it didn't generate the levels, but that way you ended up remembering most levels you play through and it almost felt like a routine to go through some rooms and dungeons, which can be a good thing. So on top of that, when you die in Hollow Knight, you go back to the last bench you sat down on, which is basically their own checkpoint. The room you die in spawns a ghost of you called a shade. If you can get back to your shade and defeat it, all the negatives of dying go away. Dying is basically an admonishment to be more careful in one way, and if you aren't more careful, you're punished. So one way or another, almost every metroidvania nowadays has its own style of punishing you and helping you. My point with this is that both Dead Cells and Hollow Knight are fantastic games, really fun to play, and both of them are Metroidvania. Even though one uses procedural generation and the other does not, I enjoyed both equally. Personally, I enjoyed the diversity of going through different levels each time you die in Dead Cells, meanwhile I enjoyed keeping the levels in Hollow Knight in my mind and remembered their patterns to almost speedrun them later. The beauty of procedural generation is that it's not a method that limits you to randomize your maps all the time. You can set your own rules, make up your own criteria, and tell your players that they will either get an entirely new generated map each time you roll out a patch for your game, or they will get to play with a new map every time they open the game again maybe, or just simply tell them that they will get the chance to remember each map and play through them with some other differences. So let's also talk about different game genres and styles. Because as you saw, I only brought up 3D games for scene generation, whereas I only talked about 2D games for procedural generation. Does that mean each method is bound to its own game perspective? No. Both can be used freely for any kind of game you're making really. The only thing that binds how you use the method you pick is your creativity, which applies even if you don't want to use any of the methods and just create the level by yourself. You can procedurally generate the map for your 3D games, like Minecraft does it, and you can use scene generation assets for 2D games. Although, the latter option is a little bit more restricted, as it really just depends on the tool you wish to use. Does it allow 2D randomization, or is it 3D specific? Check those things out before buying any assets from any of the stores. And then again, of course, you're not just limited to the assets that are already published if you wish to use a scene generation tool, you can always create your own ones too. Things like these are very common when making games, and if you want to see an incredible example, I recommend you see the game Spelunky. Mark Brown from Game Maker's Toolkit actually made a fantastic video covering the method of how the Spelunky developer Derek Yu made the game's generated levels feel so much more authored and perfected despite the fact that they are generated. So in a nutshell, the developer crafted a few handmade templates of levels, which he then fed into the game system which picked one of the templates accordingly with some criteria in mind. That way, Derek didn't need to sit down and chunk out a bunch of levels, instead he just made a few templates and let the computer take care of the rest. Now something I wish to mention is the fact that some game types normally don't use any of the generation methods that I mentioned. They often just design their own levels for their own reasons, and a couple of good examples of these are actually FPS games and MOBA games. FPS games being first-person shooters like Call of Duty, which plays through small-scale first-person shooter maps that 
are constructed specifically to act as a close quarters battlefield. Mobile games are actually quite similar to FPS games on that front because, for instance, League of Legends uses a handmade level and a couple of reasons to why these developers craft these levels instead of generating them are number one, the maps are quite small compared to maps of games like the platformer Spelunky, Hollow Knight, and Dead Cells that we just talked about. And number two, they need more details than expansion. A MOBA level is not necessarily going to expand during gameplay. It's relatively small and meant to be kept that way. Same goes for FPS games. They don't need to expand their levels, and the players are meant to be forced to play within small borders, which is done to enforce as many battles between players as possible during game time. And since players are meant to be kept in small playgrounds, why not put a lot more effort into detailing them as naturally as possible? If you have a small level, it can quickly become repetitive, even if your game doesn't rely a lot on level design. So to prevent this from happening, you can work the design of your map a lot more and put focus on those areas. Now before ending the video, let's also quickly talk about if you should use the generation method for the level design of your game, or just manually design it yourself. I'm going to keep this part short, but the most important thing for you is to ask yourself a few questions. And these questions are, number one, what game are you making? Remember what we talked about for just a little while ago? This is crucial, because does your game actually need a level generator, or are you just working on an FPS game that doesn't really need it, but you just feel like adding it just to make it look more complex? And number two, do you want the diversity of having different levels? And that means, do you want your players to get comfortable playing your one and only level, or do you want to let them experience a diverse set of levels? And finally, number three, the game design aspect. Does your game rely a lot on one specific level with its mechanics and props, and could this be a huge factor in the game? If it does, maybe you shouldn't focus on generating a bunch of levels, but instead put time into designing the entirety of your one single level, including the game mechanics, character interaction, and more. So those are the questions that I would start asking myself if I were making a game right now, which I'm unfortunately not. But most importantly, what do you think about this? Are there any other criteria you think of when making a game and deciding on the method of level design? And are you actually making a game right now where you either generate or design the level by yourself? Let us know about all this in the comment section as it can be super helpful for everyone else who watches the video, hence it offers a different perspective at the topic. And this was of course just the first episode of Game Quest, so we'll have a lot more if we keep getting support on the videos and on Patreon. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to stay up to tune for more content. Also, don't forget that we have a Discord server which you can join by going to the link on screen right now, which I'm also going to include in the description and the pinned comment of this video. And if you want to see more episodes and get access to other rewards, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Sam or simply click the link in the description. So that was all for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the comments.